Killer Kelly makes her Impact Wrestling debut. Jazz is revealed as Jordan Grace's mystery partner. Matt Stryker returns to the mic. And Impact Wrestling goes all in on Swaggle. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Don't forget, I have my own YouTube channel that's running right now. Lots of great content on there. The Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Please head on over there to the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network on YouTube. Please hit that subscribe button. Lots of great content on there. Lots of great interviews with legends and indie stars and other content as well. So please head on over Alliance Pro Wrestling Network and please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get on to it here. Impact Wrestling. So Killer Kelly has debuted for Impact Wrestling. She made her debut. She came out with uh, Renee Michelle, who will be her partner next week in the, the tag team tournament. And Killer Kelly went one-on-one with Kimberly. And it was a good match. I, I really, really liked Killer Kelly. I really, really like Killer Kelly in this match. And I like Killer Kelly in general. And I really think that she can be an incredible addition to the Impact Wrestling roster. Thought it was a really good match, but I kind of wish that she was booked to win and not lose to Kimberly. But I understand Impact Wrestling talent, new talent coming in, you want the Impact Wrestling talent to go over. So I understand uh, the reasoning behind uh, Kimberly going over on Killer Kelly there. I'm not sure if even even if Killer Kelly is signed with Impact yet. So, no, I understand um, booking Kimberly to, to defeat uh, Killer Kelly. But, but think about this. Jazz was revealed as as Jordan Grace's mystery partner. We're going to talk about that in a sec. But she was revealed as Jordan Grace's mystery partner. So, it's Jazz and Jordan Grace next week against Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle. So, you got to think, if Killer Kelly can't defeat Kimberly who who rarely wins matches what chance do we as the fans think that Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle has next week against Jordan Grace and the incoming or the returning Jazz to to Impact Wrestling what what chance do we do we think Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle has uh, next week I, zero zero chance at winning you know if Killer Kelly that's why if Killer Kelly had gone over in this match if Killer Kelly had won this match then we would have said wow Killer Kelly she's Okay, so this is she's a she's a tough she's a tough gal. She's tough talent, tough wrestler. She went over on Kimberly. She beat an Impact Wrestling superstar. So next week's gonna be interesting. But no, no, Kimberly went over and kind of took that. Um, you know, Killer Kelly going into the match had that you know had that feel about her. Had that you know oomph. You know what I'm saying? This, this, here comes Killer Kelly, and then she gets defeated by by Kimberly. And uh, then you, you gotta think, well, there's there's no chance in hell that they're beating. You know, Impact Wrestling's Jordan Grace and and the returning Jazz uh, next week. That there's no chance in hell, and and that's there's, there's there is no chance in hell that's going to happen next week. The only thing that I could think of that would make that match interesting, that would make that match interesting, is having Jazz turn on Jordan Grace, have Killer Kelly turn on Renee Michelle. And have Jazz become mentor to Killer Kelly in Impact Wrestling. I think that would be fantastic. That's just fantasy booking in my head, and I, I don't. It's not a spoiler or anything. It's just just fantasy booking in in the mind of Lewis Carlin. Uh, but I think that would be fantastic if that if that happened. But that's most likely not going to happen. Jazz and and Jordan Grace will will go over it. I think they're going to go over rather quickly. You know, they're not going to bring Jazz in. Um, for one match to, to lose to Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle, especially uh, with Renee Michelle losing to Kimberly. So there's no chance that, that Jazz and, and Jordan Grace are, are going to lose next week. They might as well just bypass that match because we all know who's going to win. 
Except, you know, that fantasy booking I have in my head. I, I'm, I'm holding it out. As I have slim, slim hope that something like that happens next week. And that I think that would be great. I think Jazz would be a terrific manager, mentor figure for, for Killer Kelly in, in Impact Wrestling. And they should sign. They should sign Killer Kelly, like, immediately. Like, immediately. Like, don't don't wait. Don't, don't, uh... Don't wait like seven weeks and then stick her on Explosion for one match and, and then she winds up signing with AEW or something. Don't wait. Sign her now. Sign her now while 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 you can. That that's all I, that's that's my advice to Impact Wrestling. Don't wait. There were there were there were other debuts as well. The Sea Stars debuted and um as I mentioned Renee, Renee Michelle was there as well. So we got to see some really fresh faces this week and that was that was very refreshing, right? Very refreshing to see fresh faces on Impact Wrestling, and it gave it a fresh feel, and uh, I enjoyed it. I thought the Sea Stars were were decent. They they lost to uh, as expected uh, to Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles, uh, but uh, they put on a good match, and I'd like to see them sign as well. Uh, there's there's a lot of fresh faces there that I would like to see Impact Wrestling, Impact Wrestling sign. But the one that I think they need to sign the most right now, and don't wait, is Killer Kelly. Absolutely need to sign Killer Kelly immediately, especially with the prospect of Taya Valkyrie leaving. And I spoke about this last week, especially with the prospect of Taya Valkyrie uh, possibly leaving Impact Wrestling. They need to lock Killer Kelly up right now. Okay, Jazz. I'm gonna let's talk about Jazz for a bit. She was revealed, as I mentioned, revealed as a mystery partner for Jordan Grace. I will admit I was wrong. I thought it was gonna be Madison Rain. I didn't mention Jazz. Last week during the podcast, didn't think it was going to be her because she said that she retired. I was surprised to see her back. And uh, she looked a little older than than I remember her, to be honest. But uh, I think she's 48 years old, but she, she, she's still, I'm sure she's still in, in good shape. And um, surprised, um, actually, I'm, I'm happy that I was wrong because... Madison Rain coming in would have been, um, might have been a little boring, uh, but it was a nice surprise seeing Jazz uh, coming back. So we will see Jazz and Jordan Grace uh, next week uh, defeating Killer Kelly and, and Renee Michelle. Because once again, Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle have absolutely no shot at all at winning that match next week. And I miss, mentioned fresh faces. Uh, Matt Stryker was back on the announce team. He was announcing with, with Josh Matthews this week. And man, I absolutely love Matt Stryker. Absolutely love Matt Stryker. And I was a little disappointed to hear that you know, Madison Rain is not on the announce team this week because she's she's in wrestler's court. Uh, but sh- but but Josh Matthews reassured us that she'll be back next week. I don't want her back. <laughs> I don't want her back next week. I want Matt Stryker back next week. And I want Matt Stryker back forever. I it's just just a fantastic job as usual by Matt Stryker. It makes the matches more meaningful. They make the matches he makes the matches more exciting. It's just just a, a top notch job by Matt Stryker. And and as as BQ and TW were were saying on their podcast, he really he he makes Josh Matthews step up his game. He makes Josh Matthews step up his game, and and I think they worked well together. I think they worked well together. Uh, Josh Matthews can't um, be the goofy Josh Matthews, you know, working off the goofiness of Don Callis, um, or trying to be cute and funny with with uh, Madison Rain. Matt Stryker made him step up his game, and they they did really well. And I I want Matt Stryker to remain. On the announce team, I, I I I don't want Madison Rain back next week. I hope hopefully hopefully there'll be um hopefully uh I don't know maybe there'll be uh the the court will be extended or something and uh, she'll have to return to court next week and Matt Stryker will will return to the announce team. But uh, but if Impact Wrestling is smart, if if they are smart, they will bring back Matt Stryker full time to the main announce team. Whether it's with Don Callis. Uh, Josh Matthews, or I'm sure he would work well with Madison Rain. Whoever he works with, he he does a fantastic job. But it's just as long as Matt Stryker is in on the announce team, I will be a happy Lewis Carlin. All right. So, Impact Wrestling has seemingly gone all in on Swaggle, and I say all in because we it was no surprise we saw. 
last uh, the last episode uh, that the phenomenal one was actually the we nominal one, Swaggle doing his uh, AJ Styles impersonation, and uh, we got um, actually he was introduced by Carl Anderson, and then we we they they showed some eight by ten. Um, Eight by ten graphics, post pictures of of Carl Anderson and the We Nominal one, um, and then we got uh, Swaggle added to <laughs> added to the Impact Wrestling roster page. So man, they're going all in on Swaggle. They are going all in on Swaggle. Was not a fan of the Phenomenal one. I knew it was going to happen. I knew I wasn't going to like it, and I was right. I didn't like it at all. For them to 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 use AJ Styles' name to to promote the show and and nobody nope everybody knew that it wasn't going to be AJ Styles yeah you know, except for Josh Matthews except for Josh Matthews this is the only part of the show that I didn't like about Josh Matthews is is AJ Styles they they play his music which was nice to hear by the way but they played his music showed his graphic Josh Matthews is could it be could it be is he here is he here is AJ Styles here and I'm thinking come on. Come on, Josh. Come on. You know he's not here. We all know he's not here. Okay, and then, of course, Swaggle skips out, and he's the phenomenal one. And he goes up against Ethan Page and and surprisingly goes over on Ethan Page, <laughs> which I thought was kind of silly, too. He went over on Ethan Page. And um, when I say it's silly, but I, I guess that means um, Ethan Page is most likely not coming back because why— <laughs> Why would why would Swaggle go over on Ethan Page? I mean, that's really you know knocking him down a few pegs, knocking Ethan Page down a few pegs. It wasn't entertaining. It wasn't cute. It wasn't funny. You know, I know Carl Anderson and and um, oh, it's Carl Anderson, but Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson. They, they 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 try to be funny, but this this wasn't funny at all. And I wonder how what I wonder what AJ Styles how AJ Styles feels about that. Now, I'm sure he has a good sense of humor, but I know a few weeks ago there were there was rumors about him um, possibly uh, coming back. He said, never say never. Uh, the Good Brothers said they're going to do whatever they can to get AJ Styles back. And, 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 and now they're bringing out the Winomino one, uh, and they're, um, they're doing a parody of AJ Styles. I wonder how if, if that sits well with AJ Styles or if it's... Um, just a, well, of course, it's a rib on AJ Styles, but just don't know how we how we would feel about that. And why would why would Impact Wrestling? You know, AJ Styles is their probably the greatest wrestler ever to compete. Why would they why would they allow that to happen? Why would they make fun of their the greatest star ever to come out of of TNA slash Impact Wrestling? Uh, well, the reason probably being is that the Good Brothers have have complete creative control over anything they do, and and they can do whatever they want. I'm 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 sure if the Good Brothers wanted wanted Ethan Page to have a match with a with a bag of horse crap, that uh, Scott Demore would have no choice but to say, okay, let's 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 go for it, guys. Let's do it. Let's see let's see how it goes. And and then a bag of horse crap, <laughs> a bag of horse crap would come bouncing out. And it would go over on Ethan Page. <laughs> Ethan Page. Ethan Page would lose to a bounce to a to a bag of crap, because um, because that's the that's what the Good Brothers would want because they have creative control over everything they do. Uh, so I, I I didn't like. I thought it was really bad. And 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 for them to and and Swaggle was just on AEW as I mentioned last week in a diaper crying like a baby. Uh, but I guess they still they're gonna go all in and we're gonna see more of the Wadamana one. This is not the end of it. Like I said, they did they did eight by ten photos with with. Uh, with um, Swaggle as a phenomenal one, and and Carl Anderson, and uh, it's not the end. We're gonna see more. We're gonna see more of the phenomenal one, and I, I don't want to see any more. I don't want to see any more of the phenomenal one. I don't want to see it ever again. Never, never, never again. Even even um even MJF was was kind of uh, making fun of it on Twitter. He's like, oh, he's on our show in a diaper, and and I, f- I forgot the tweet, but he he was he was kind of making fun of it on uh, on um, on Twitter. And actually, BQ I think sent me the ki- sent me the the quote on uh, the tweet on that. Uh, but I, I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to see the phenomenal one ever ever again. But 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 the fact of the matter is, we're gonna see a lot more of them. We're gonna see a lot more of the phenomenal one. 
speaking of the Good Brothers, what happened? You know, we at Slammiversary, there was so much buzz. There was so much buzz with all the guys coming in, you know, with the Good Brothers. Uh, Good Brothers came in, it was a huge buzz, and Eric Young returned, and Brian Myers, and and there was the the buzz was just so huge. And Impact Wrestling for a bit was was basically the talk of the professional wrestling world. But that's kind of died down. It's really died down. I mean, let's take the Good Brothers for example. I mean, well, well let's actually let's, let's talk about the Rascals. The Rascals left. You know, Ethan Page might be leaving. Taya Valkyrie might be leaving. Um, the whole Kylie Ray um, unfortunate uh, situation. Uh, so things haven't really been, you know, shining for Impact Wrestling uh, lately. Like I said, there's just no buzz there. And let's look at the Good Brothers. I mean, they, they won the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team titles. Great. But uh, they've, they've been teasing, they've been teasing a split for the North. From For the North. Um, Josh Alexander seems to be getting more and more more and more um, aggravated and upset and losing patience with Ethan Page, and I'm sure they're eventually gonna they're gonna they're gonna split up. Josh Alexander gonna attack Ethan Page and close the door in the north, uh, open up a huge door for Josh Alexander. Um, like I said last week, if Josh Alexander is, is the real deal and and he can take the Impact Wrestling World Championship and be a legitimate championship and he can really run with it. And I would be all for Josh Alexander, a Josh Alexander Impact Wrestling World Title run. Uh, but as the North Door would close, I mean, who would else? Who's left to challenge the Good Brothers for the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Championship? I mean, the 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 Rascals are gone. I mean, what are, what are, what are you gonna gonna have the Deaners face Triple X to see who the number one contenders are uh, for for uh, for the for the titles? Or maybe uh, Madman Fulton Ace Ace Austin. Okay, possibly. Uh, another team they could put together, I think, would be good. Would be Eric Young and, and Joe Doring. I think that would be a good tag team. That would be, that would be a good contender right there for for the Good Brothers. But there's not much for the Good Brothers right now uh, to to feud with. There's, they're, they're the the North was there. The North and the Good Brothers. That was the best feud that Impact Wrestling had, and I think it. They it they just for some reason didn't care about it they just didn't care and it wasn't pushed and it wasn't really it wasn't delivered to the fans as as an important feud which it which it really should have been but i'm i i've already went off on that i'm not going to go off on that now but uh i'm not going to go on a tangent on that now but but who's there there's really nobody there there's nobody there uh unless i don't know maybe uh who can they uh who can they throw together Maybe uh maybe Willie Mack can uh, team up with Chris Bay or or Willie Ma- or Brian Myers and um and Rich Swan can team up. They, they could just throw they just throw random guys together and and make them a tag team. But there's there's nobody for them to feud right now, with right now. So it's it's I, I don't know what they're gonna be doing, uh with um with the Good Brothers and the the tag team titles. But they gotta get that buzz back somehow. They gotta get that buzz back somehow, and um. I remember, I remember at Slammiversary, uh, Slammiversary, uh, Don Callis uh, was um, the the show that they do um, after Impact Wrestling. The, the name escapes me, um, but but Don Callis got a surprise phone call from Scott Demore, and Don Callis answered. He goes, "Hey Scott, who are we signing now?" This was before Slammiversary. He said, "Who are we signing now, Scott?" And I'm thinking, my question is to Scott Demore and and Don Callis. That's my very question. Who are we signing now? Who are we signing now? I mean, you look at MLW. You look at Court Bauer. I'm going to use Court Bauer as an example. Court Bauer says that when he looks for talent, he looks for undiscovered, undiscovered talent in in promotions that people might have might have looked over that that other promotions have looked over, and he looks for that undiscovered talent. That's how he found Junior for two, uh, Junior for two. That's how he found Richard Holiday. That's how he found Myron Reed. That's how he found. Um, who else is there? That's how he found the Von Erics. Uh But that's 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 what he does. That's what Impact Wrestling's got to do. They got to look for that undiscovered talent. They don't got to go. Hey, let's uh, we need somebody. Let's let's give Swaggle a call. Let's get Swaggle. Let's get Swaggle down here and wrestle Brian Myers. Let, let's get that going. But they they got to they 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 what Court Bauer's doing is exactly what Impact Wrestling should be doing right now. 
looking for that undiscovered talent. And on this episode, we saw a lot of fresh faces. We saw some of that. We saw the the C stars. We saw Killer Kelly. We saw Renee Michelle. They got to sign him. They got to sign him. So again, my question: Who are we signing now, guys? Impact Wrestling. Who are we signing now? Okay, so that's it for me. I am your host, Lewis Carlin. This has been Shooting Up North, as heard right here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.